Hello everyone. Welcome to the DevOps Planet. In this video, we will see how we can write AWS Lambda function using Terraform. So in my previous video, we have already seen how we can do that from AWS console. In this video, we will do the same thing using Terraform. So for that, I have already written a Terraform code and you can find the link of this GitHub repo in the description of this video. So now let me explain you what code I have written here. So first of all, I have written a module here. So what is module? So a module is nothing but a function. We can un understand it like this. So let's suppose in a programming language, we are writing a function in a file and we are calling that function again and again whenever it is required. So in a module, we can understand in the same way. So I have written a module here and I have given that name Lambda. Now inside the module, I have written two files. One is main.tf file and another one is variables.tf file. So first let me go through the main.tf file. So in the main.tf file, first I am fetching some data. So to create the lambda function, we need to create a role. So when we create a role, we need to pass that for which service we are going to create the role. So that identifier I have passed here. So I am fetching the data to create the role for the lambda function. Then I am creating a policy. So this policy basically has the S3 full access because in this video, we will see how we will write a Python program in a ter in the Lambda function using Terraform and that program will list all the buckets in the AWS S3. So for that, we need a policy that can access our AWS S3 bucket. So I'm creating the policy. Now these two things I am passing in the Lambda in the lambda role so i am creating a role here so the role name i am picking up from the variables and this is the assume role policy so here we, i am defining that this role is for the lambda function and here i am attaching the policy so this is the policy which i am attaching now the next is again i am using the archive archive file here so in the lambda function we need to pass the file in the zip format so here i am converting my this python file into the zip format and the same thing i am passing here so i am passing the output of this data block here output of this data block in the file name so I, you can see i have passed the output path and output path is nothing but the zip file so there are other variables also so i am passing the function name here I am passing the role, so that is the role ARN which will return from this resource. Here I am passing the handler. So handler is nothing but the entry point for our program. So when we write down a program on, a, on our local machine, we pass that it should be start from the main function or any other function. So here in the Lambda also, we need to pass the handler. So we need to define that from where our program will start execute. So this is the file name, list S3 and this is the function name. So the file name dot function name is the combination of the handler that we have to pass. Then I am, then this is the source code has, then I'm passing the runtime. So I am writing the Python program. So I have write down the Python 3.11 here. You can pass according to your code base and I'm configuring some environment variables. Now these all variables, which you are seeing here, I am defining all these variables in the variables.tf file. And these are the default value of those variables. So this is our module to create a Lambda function using Terraform. Now I am on the root folder. So in the root folder, you can see there is another main.tf file. So when you click on this main.tf file, you will see I am calling that module here. So that is how we call the module and I'm passing the path of that module. Now these are the variables name, which I am passing in my module. And if you see there is a file variables.tf, so I have defined these variables again here and pass some default values and the actual values of these variables I have passed in the terraform.tf bars. So if I will not pass any variable value here, it will pick the default one. And let's suppose you don't want to pass any variable here. So you can remove this and this will work directly. It will, the module will read whatever, what are the default values has designed, defined. So I'm passing these things here 
and there is another uh, file that is provided or tf so our provider is aws that is why the provider is aws if we if we use uh, other cloud let's suppose azure or gcp then we need to update this provider so now come to the execution part so first of all we need to configure the aws cli so let me check whether my aws cli is working fine here and it's connected to my account or not so i'm just listing the bucket so it gives the output it means my AWS CLI is working fine. fine. Now to execute the Terraform code, there are three commands which we need to execute. So first is Terraform init command. So this command will download the required plugins, modules, what we are using in our code. So as you can see, we are using the AWS provider. It is installing that. We have used the archive uh, data. So it is using that. So that's how it is installing the plugin and other things. And here you see it, it, it has initialized the module. So because my module is in the same place, that's why it has initialized directly. If we can use the modules from the other remote location also like GitHub or other repositories. So <clears throat> once this installation is complete, the next is we will ask the Terraform that what resources it will create. So for that, there is another command. So let me, uh, let's, this command we completed. Okay, so it has initialized the Terraform. So the second command in is Terraform plan. So this command will give us a brief idea that what uh, resources it will create. So here we can see the plan. We can go to each and every resource. It will give us the names, the data their resources that how many resources it will create what will be the name of the resource what will be the value of the resource similarly the other details so if we can uh if, so if we want to change anything so we can see in the plan here and we can change accordingly so let's complete the plan first and then we will see how we can create the resources okay so here you see First, it read that module. First, it read that module. And then, here we can see, it will create one policy. And this is the uh, policy JSON. And then, it will create one IAM role. So, this uh, so this is the IAM role thing. And then, here we can see, it will create one Lambda function. And if you go through the variables, you will see the handler is this one. The function name is this one. So that this value we have passed in the terraform.tfwares file. So the function name we have passed here. If we will remove this, then it will pick the default values from the variables.tf file. So because I have passed in the terraform.tfwares, that is why it is reading these values. So that's how we can see the plan. The next command is terraform apply. So this is the command where I am saying the terraform that please create all these resources. So this command will also again give us a detailed plan to create the resources and then it will ask for a confirmation that whether we want to create these resources or not. So only the yes is acceptable. Other values will be treated as no. Even if I press enter, it will treat it as no. So in this step, you only need to pass the yes. So let me show you how that will work. Okay, so it is asking enter a value. And also you can see in the output that it is saying that only yes will be accept to approve. So I am pressing yes. Now it will start the resource creation part. So it has started the resource creation part and it failed uh, because my user AWS CLI do not have access to create the policies and all. So let me go to the AWS space and update the permission. So I am going to the IAM service. And here I will click on the users, click on username, and then click on add permissions. So I am clicking on add permission and attach policy, policy directly here. I, so this uh, user want to create some policy and role. So I'm giving the IAM full access. Also, it will create the AWS Lambda function. So I am giving some other permissions to create the AWS Lambda function. So Lambda function full access and 
the AWS Lambda function role. Click on next and add permissions. So we have added all these. We have added these three permissions. Now again, execute the Terraform apply. So one more thing I want to highlight here is if you don't want to prompt it for yes and you are very confident that it will create valid resources and based on your requirement. So you can directly pass a flag here that is auto approve. So by this flag, it will not ask for the confirmation. It will show you a detailed plan that what resources it will create and it will directly start the resource creation part. So this variable is, uh, this flag is very used when we automate the uh, Terraform using some pipelines or using some third party tool or uh, uh, programming languages. At that time, it will not uh, give you a prompt to pass the value. It will directly start the resource creation thing. So now it has started uh, the reading the modules and other things. Now it has given the plan and this time it is not asking for any uh, confirmation. It is not asking for any input and it will directly st uh, start to create the resources. So it is creating the policy. So the policy creation has been completed. Now it has created one role. So that is also completed. So now let me show these things to you on the AWS console itself. So I am clicking on the policy menu policy button here. And if you fetch here, let me check what was the policy name. So I'm going in the terraform.tfrs file. Okay. And this is the policy name. So I'm filtering it. Let me refresh this first. So we have the policy here, click on this and if you go to the JSON view, so you will see this is the policy which I have created. Now let's check with the role. So I am clicking on this roles button and uh, I am passing the role name here. The role has been created and now click on this role. So here you will see that policy has been automatically attached to this role. So that is how we have given the S3 access to this role and this role has been attached to our lambda function. So let's see the output. Okay, so it has created the lambda function. So now verify the same also. So let me search the lambda service here. Open this service. So we can see the function has been created and it has created one minute ago and the runtime is Python. So click on this function and if you will scroll down, you will see the code here. It is loading. So let me zoom it. So this is the code which my list s3.py file here. So let me show you this file also. So this is my Python file which we passed in our module. So the same code we can have here. So this is uh, the Python code. So we are using the Boto3 module here. And if you scroll down and click on the runtime settings and click on the edit, sorry, click on the edit. Yeah. So you will see that right, uh, runtime is Python and handler is this one. And if I cancel it, scroll down again, you will see these details also here. So handler is this one and runtime is Python. So now let me zoom out this. Okay, now to test this function, I am clicking on the test button here and I am directly click on the test because I do not need any input for this program. So you see the execution has started and it has been done and in the detail, I can see the list of my AWS S3 buckets. So the other things, if you want to verify the role and all, so you can click on the configuration tab, click on the permissions. So you see the role name. So this is the role which have assigned to our Lambda function. So we create a policy, we attach that policy to a role, then we create a role and we assign that role to the Lambda function. So that is how my Lambda is able to connect to my AWS S3 services. So that is how we can create the Lambda function, AWS policy and roles. And if you want to destroy the same things in a one go, so the command is Terraform 
destroy and again if you don't want to prompt you can pass the hyphen hyphen auto approve flag so it will destroy each and everything without asking you so let me show you that also so it will first read the so it will first read the uh, backend file so uh, and then it will give us a plan that what resources it will create and if you also want to see the backend file so here you will see uh, in the root repo the one file is generated that is terraform.tf state so this is the terraform.tf state file where terraform store all the backend things that what resources it has created and what resources it will delete so if you see in the destroy it had give us the plan that what resources it is it is destroying and here you can see it has deleted all those resources so the same you can verify on the aws console so if i just go to the function page and refresh it you can see that function is deleted and also for the roles if i refresh it if i go to the roles and uh, i so currently the role is here and if i refresh it we can see the role has been deleted so that is how we can write down a lambda function using terraform i hope you like this video Thanks for watching this.